The second story over the weekend was the uh, European elections. Uh, there, there were uh, European elections uh, throughout Europe that basically involved the, uh, uh, the European Parliament. So European Parliament uh, has elections, uh, and then uh, in the political parties, uh, they, they, but the elections are each country sends its representatives. Uh, and then within the European Parliament, they have uh, different parties have clumped together. So center-right parties all clump together, forming not a single party, but a single kind of coalition in the European Parliament. They call themselves EPP, the, uh, the uh, uh, center, the center-left political party, uh, all clumped together. They're called the SND, Socialism and Democracy. And then there's the Renewal Party, which are like liberals, are more classical liberals, more pro-free market type liberals who want to rein in the bureaucracy. They're called RE, the Renewal Party. And then there are uh, two clusters of what are called far-right political parties. It's the ECR, the ECR is dominated by uh, Maloney and um, and uh, the um, uh, the uh, Maloney and uh, her political party in Italy, ID uh, identity ID from identity, which is a far right political party affiliated with Marie Le Pen, uh, primarily uh, comprises of the French delegation, Marie Le Pen's delegation. Then there are the Greens, which are the Greens, the environmentalists, leftists. Um, then there's uh, the left, I guess just another leftist grouping. Uh, and then there's uh, uh, NA, non-affiliated, and others. I'm not sure what the others are, but non-affiliated is mostly uh, right-wing, more right-wing uh, parties. Uh, primarily, uh, this would compose in this election of the AFD from, um, uh, from Germany and um, Orban's political party, Orban's political party from uh, from Hungary. So that is uh, that is kind of the, the the layout in the European Parliament. Um, they vote for leadership. They appoint. They kind of vote for leadership, like you do in a parliament, elect the government. They vote for the leadership of the European Union. Um, I think they uh, some bills and some other things they have to vote on, but a lot of the actual decision making. In the European Union, gets done by the, uh, the 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 particular governments getting together and and making decisions. So while the European Parliament has some function, it is not the most important uh, of the uh, entities within the European Union. However, the elections were uh, very symbolic, right? These are elections that um, uh, represent kind of these are not as meaningful as country elections, but they are symbolic in terms of the, the atmosphere in any given particular country, the, the views of people in any particular country in terms of, uh, in terms of what is, uh, where they are leaning. And this election, which happened over the weekend, clearly indicated a, 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 number, of, uh, a number of clear-cut uh, trends, uh, trends in, in, uh, in European politics. Uh, basically, in European politics, the, the right is on the rise. This is true of both center-right and far-right. Uh, uh, but every country is a little different, right? So in some countries, not so much, like in Scandinavia. Uh, even in Sweden, where you would think, given uh, the problems they have with Muslim immigrants, you would see another spike uh, of the far-right in Sweden. The, the far-right in Sweden did not do well. Uh, in uh, in Scandinavia, kind of center left parties did better than expected, but uh, the center, center right, center left, pretty much held. If you look at uh, if you look at um, uh, Germany, the uh, the current governing political parties in Germany were crushed, crushed. They did worse than the far right. Uh, the, the the political party that did the best was the center right, which will probably win the next election in Germany. But then number two was the far right, the FD, which is a horrible political party with people associated with it who are associated with neo-Nazis and associate. And, and there was just a, a, a scandal that broke recently about the, the, them getting money from the Chinese and getting money from the Russians 
Uh, so this is a, a very unsavvy political party, and they, 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 they're now scoring number two in Germany. Uh, the biggest surprise, the biggest probably shock to the system, I think, for everybody, was what happened in France. Uh, in France, basically, the far right, Marie Le Pen's um, uh, political party, crushed, I mean, crushed the, uh, uh, the um, uh, Macron's party. Macron is a center, just center, center left, center right, probably center right a little bit. Uh, they just crushed Macron. Uh, humiliatingly so, to such an extent that Macron immediately announced that he's dissolving parliament and calling for an election, which is a huge risk. He's basically daring the French people, okay, you want a parliament run by Marie Le Pen's political party? Vote for them. Let's see you vote for them. And... Um, <laughs> it's going to be interesting. So we've got a, a, an election, uh, and uh, the way they do the elections in France, it's two rounds. The first round, a bunch of people uh, in each kind of district are running. Then the top two run in each district against one another. And basically, the question is, are you really going to let Marie Le Pen's political party dominate French parliament? And it's going to be fascinating to watch. It's a huge gamble. Uh, but basically, Macron is putting everything he has onto this election uh, after he got humiliated in the European election. I will note Marie Le Pen over the last few years has, you know, really, really tried to moderate her far-right views. She's uh, distanced herself from her anti-Semitic father. She's toned down the, uh, the racist rhetoric. She's even toned down, dramatically toned down, uh, even the anti-immigration rhetoric. She, in spite of being very close to Putin in the past and receiving money from Russia in the past, uh, is pro-Ukraine and anti-Russia. So uh, uh, she has toned herself down, and uh, indeed to her right, there was a political party that ran to her right that did quite well as well in the French election. Uh, so uh, the right generally did well. Anyway, uh, it, it, on the other hand, in Spain... The center-left did well. Uh, in Italy, Maloney did well, not parties to her right. Uh, in, in Portugal, the center hell, the center did well. Uh, so it wasn't uniform. In Belgium, Belgium, the government got crushed, uh, leading to the resignation of the prime minister of Belgium as a consequence of how badly his political party did in European parliaments, not in Belgian parliament uh, 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 elections, in European elections. Um, in Hungary... Uh, an interesting story. Just, I mean, there's just a lot of these interesting stories. In Hungary, uh, Orban had his worst showing, really, since uh, since uh, he's been running Hungary in this this second round. He ran a long time ago in this in more recent times, and he was um, in a in a new political party that was just founded a few months ago. Uh, did it was the second biggest. Uh, Orban still got the most votes. But he was short of 50%, which he had in the previous elections. He, I think he got 44. And this, uh, this new party that uh, nobody had heard of until recently, of, of a former associate of Orban's, but more center, more center right, more center than Orban's kind of pro Putin, far right, um, and more affiliated with Europe and more committed to economic freedom. Uh, Orban is not committed to economic freedom at all. This political party is, has risen, and and I, I think is going to pose a real threat now to Orban when it comes time for uh, elections inside Hungary. So that is interesting. All right. So what's the bottom line? The bottom line is uh, the uh, the bigger winners uh, of of yesterday's election was w one, the center right. The center right gained ten seats. Uh, it went from 176 seats to uh, 186 seats in the European Parliament. Um, the, um, uh, you know, Maloney won. Uh, they gained, they didn't gain a huge amount, but they gained her, her kind of uh, aggregate cross European, uh, uh, gained four seats. Um, uh, so they, they are larger. They went from 69 to 73. ID, which is Marie Le Pen, they won big. They were the big winners, I think, is Marie Le Pen. They gained nine seats. They went, they went from uh, 49 to 58 seats. 
Uh, and um, yeah, those are the winners. So those two, and of course, in in you know from the non-affiliates, the big winner there was the this far right German party, which is really horrible. The AfD, uh, you know, who who. Uh, who significantly increased the number of seats uh, that they had and indeed won most of the votes in East Germany. In East Germany, they were the biggest political party from, for the European Parliament. Right? So a little scary what's going on in Germany. Uh, the big losers, uh, two big, big losers, which is interesting, right? Um, the Renewal Party, uh, free markets, liberal in the classical sense, lost 23 seats. They're down to 79. That's a huge defeat, and it just shows you that the one thing that both the left and right agree on, the one thing that everybody's in agreement is we're not interested in markets. Markets out. That's the same as in the U.S. And the other big loser, and this is a good one, but it's, and it's a big loser in a percentage term, even bigger than renewal, that is the Greens. I mean, the one thing that I think uh, center-right, far-right, and even, uh, you know, but center-right, far-right, all, uh, you know, have uh, 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 agreed on um, implicitly is this whole climate change stuff has to stop. This is the farmers' protests, this is the absurdity of closing nuclear power plants in Germany and the high cost of energy throughout Europe uh, blamed on the Greens. So the environmentalists, the environmentalists are actually the biggest losers of this uh, election. And that has to be a good thing. The uh, center left uh, only lost four seats, but it lost. So I'd say left wing parties generally, left wing parties all lost. Not a single left-wing party gained, um, and uh, I mean, as a whole, in terms of these coalitions. Again, in in Spain, in a few other places, the the center-left did gain, but but not in an overall sense. Uh, and um, some of the most horrible people on the right gained. Um, I, Poland did well in a sense that. Uh, the the governing coalition did well. They they are they are centrist. I don't know if they're center right. I think they're affiliated with EPP. I think they're center right. Whereas the uh, 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 the previous ruling party in Poland, which was uh, more right wing, I think is associated with ESR, did not do as well. And the, and then there's a far right wing in Poland, which also didn't do as well, but did but still got some seats. So. Again, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a little confusing, but generally the trend is right, particularly far right in specific places like France, and um, the left getting clobbered. So I have to say again, my predictions about the fact that the left is not tenable, that the left is ultimately always going to be rejected, that the left is too... Uh, nihilistic, suicidal, and disintegrated to actually win in total and to survive in the long run, uh, those predictions seem to be coming true again. Now, uh, Charlie asked a real good question. What does far right mean? All right, so what does far right mean in this context? It really means, I mean, really there are only two issues that the far right cares about. Only uh, two issues that the far right cares about. Yes, Scott, you can pretend that it's one election. You, you can pretend that I haven't given a hundred different examples of exactly the same thing happening all over the U.S. and all over the world for years now. But that's you as an evader, and that's fine. You can hang on to your crazy beliefs. The only two things that the far right seems to really care about, and then there's one where they are split. The two things that they all agree on, that there is uniformity, is anti-immigration, all immigration, right? They're very anti-immigration. Um, and, and that they share, of course, with the right in the United States. They, they are obsessed with immigration. That is the one thing they all talk about all the time, nonstop. And the other issue is um, they're anti 
they become anti-green. They're anti-climate change regulation. So that's the good side of the far right, right? They're anti uh, the Green New Deal. They're anti um, uh, all these policies that would curb human activity in order to reduce climate change nonsense. So those are the two things. Now, in addition to that, they're generally protectionist vis-a-vis -vis the European Union. They don't want anybody, they don't want free trade deals that the European Union signs with other countries. And, and this is where they disagree. And, and again, the protectionism, they disagree, they're going to disagree. Of course, they're going to disagree on exactly what should be protected because each country has its own preferences. So the nationalist, uh, and many of them, not all of them, but some of these political parties are what are called Eurosceptics. So they don't like the European Union. They're running for the European Union Parliament, but they don't like the European Union. Like, they want, some of them want to see their countries leave the European Union. Like, Marie Le Pen used to run on a platform of leaving the European Union. That was a big deal. We want to leave the European Union. We want to get out of the euro. We want to own central bank. We want to get out of the European Union. But she discovered that that was not popular in France. The French actually like being able to drive around Europe without showing a passport and being able to enjoy the movement of labor capital and goods throughout Europe. Uh, and so Marie Le Pen has changed to saying, no, 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 I, I, I still want to be in, in the European Union. I just don't want it to have too much power. So they're generally anti-too much European power. So uh, those, uh, that is what the far right stands for. Generally, it's, you know, depending on the, on the specifics, I mean, Marie Le Pen in, um, uh, Marie Le Pen's political party in France and the one further to the right uh, have, have, have been uh, and expressed racist views. Suddenly, the AFD uh, in, in Germany is, is expressed really d deeply racist and uh, uh, sometimes anti-Semitic views. Um, so the far right, depending on the specific political party, certainly uh, the, the Scandinavian far right is very racist. So, um, uh, you know, they, they, depending on which country and which far right particular party will determine, uh, you know, uh, exactly how, let's say, racist they are and or what, what unites them. Um, Maloney has been pretty good in Italy in spite of being associated with the far right. She's actually governed uh, uh, in a much more centrist and pro-European, pro-EU fashion, even though she, is, she was considered a Euro skeptic, but is no longer. Right. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, protectionism, anti-immigration, uh, xenophobia. Um, it's not, the one thing that it's not, the one thing to remember that far right does not represent is capitalism. Nobody represents that. I mean, to the extent that anybody did, it was the renewal part, your renewal um, uh, members, and they got crushed. They're, they're irrelevant in Europe today. Capitalism is irrelevant in Europe. The, what's relevant is, um, uh, just like in America, capitalism is irrelevant. It's immigration, 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 and everything that's wrapped up into immigration, protectionism, nationalism. It's all kind of of a, a, a common wrapping, uh, a common wrapping. All right, uh, th we'll talk more about this. There's a, there's, there will be a lot more to talk about it, particularly once we see how the, the French elections shape up because they're gonna be, you know, I think they're gonna be uh, really, really crucial uh, and really, really interesting in terms of um, the future of France, the future of Europe, uh, and what is actually, what actually is going on. All right.